Good morning, um, everybody. Um, welcome at Quintess. Uh, Tom, Great. you're the co-founder of uh, Jared Street. I'm sure you're going to tell us a couple of things about the company, I will say, uh, right away. Um, Quintus, we are your customer. We bought um, your headsets for all our employees actually, let's say, uh, last year. Of course, like in the first place, because it's a great product mm -hmm. for like our consultants that work from their home offices and work from different locations. And we really like the premium quality and the appeal to it. And everybody is using them, let's say, very with satisfaction. But there are a couple of few other aspects why we actually chose your product. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is actually, let's say, that you guys are also from Rotterdam. Yeah. Actually, you're from the other side of the block here, yeah. so a so five minutes minute walk. <laughs> five minute walk to our office, so that's great. Um, and also, actually, let's say because your product is circular, and we're supply chain guys. Um, our customers run supply chains, and there's a lot of interest in supply chains. So I think let's say that was actually an excellent occasion to invite you for this interview to talk a little bit about like, your experience, uh, let's say, in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was also let's say one of the reasons why we, um, yeah, why we of course selected this product because it was very appealing to us uh, in that uh, in that area. Yeah. I recently wrote a blog on um, on, on, on LinkedIn um, about Renault, so the car manufacturer, about their Renault Lucia idea of a circular and I got like quite a lot of um, say feedback on that from different people that had read that blog and it's still pretty much theoretical right and you guys you've already done this I yeah. mean this is the way you started the company and you did this mm -hmm. so I think like although it's a different scale than Reno yeah uh, it's not comparable I think the lessons learned um, from your experience um, I still think let's say very interesting for our type of for our type of audience so thanks for coming over no. And being prepared actually, let's say, to, to talk about that uh, yeah. with, uh, with with me today, and I think it's going to be actually, let's say, very very interesting and uh, very exciting. Mm -hmm. So, Tom, can you introduce yourself and Gerard Street for everyone that doesn't know this great product yet? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm Tom. Uh, I have a background uh, as an uh, industrial designer. Uh, I founded the company together with uh, Doris. I also know him from the university. And uh, we found a jersey because uh, me and Doris are true music lovers. And uh, we using our headphones the whole day during study, during uh, traveling. But we also threw away a lot of them, like three a year, because a cable broke or a padding teared. And we thought, yeah, this is such a waste. Because when we throw it away, 95% of all the materials and products are still working. And uh, we want to make this uh, smarter. All right. And so, um, I mean, um, it's uh, it's clear, I think, from the start that the product needed to be to, needed to be uh, to, to to be circular from the start. That was the original idea around that. Um, but it's pretty uncommon for consumer electronics, isn't it? So, how did you guys actually go about this? Uh, we started with the idea we want to propel the circular economy because yeah. there were no good examples. Uh, so from that we analyzed the headphone. Okay, how do we how do we make this circular? Uh, so that's the product view. And how do we get clients on board? Are they willing to pay per month to subscribe to the service? So we did a market test and we did a lot of product development on the headphone itself. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about those aspects because, mm -hmm. like. The traditional, let's say, marketing model for like this type of material is like you buy it, you use it, you lose it, right? Yeah. So, but you actually said you're not only going to change the product, but you also change the business model behind it in order to fit it into a circular model. Yeah. So, can you, because for people that are not familiar with that, like, can you explain a little bit like how you how you went about it and how you do it without like going into the details of your pricing model, but just as what, what the concept is behind it, because I think you said something like a sur service and a subscription. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, now we, uh, a couple of things, we were, currently we also sell the headphone, but back in the days we only had the subscription. And what we did is we, we needed to validate are, are people willing to pay uh, per month for hardware. So instead of building our own headphone, we just bought in a couple of headphones put them on the internet and people could sign online to the service. Right. And within uh, one week, uh, I think uh, 48 people did it and we had uh, like a 23% uh, conversion on the test, so it went well. 
And that was the first start, okay, people are willing to do this. And then we thought, okay, now we need to make this product circular because uh, people are willing to pay per month. And now we need to step up and develop the headphone ourselves. Okay, and so what aspects of this headphone are, are, are different from a traditional headphone? So can you point about like some of the designs and, and, and some of the aspects that you took into consideration when you reinvented the headphone for yeah. circular basically? Yeah. Because that's what you guys did, right? Good question, uh, because we were responsible for all the damages done. We needed to design a headphone which doesn't damage that quickly, uh -huh. but also that the uh, cost for shipment to the client should be as low as possible. So when you normally ship something, it's in the Netherlands, it's uh, 6 euro 90, but if you do it via the mailbox, it's way cheaper. So we designed this packaging and every separate part can be detached without glue and it fits the mailbox. So All right. it really saves our lot of operational cost to uh, but it's also a design challenge because every part needs to be smaller than uh, the maximum height of the mailbox. Okay, so every part of this actually just fits through the mailbox and can be done as a basically the same with a stamp. Yeah. So instead of with a six euro package and yeah. since you will have returns, you incur this cost not only once when you ship it to the consumer, but potentially you can go incur that cost also when there's a repair yeah, to for every part. Like for every part yeah. that's broken, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's then a substantial starts to be add up in terms of as a cost element uh, actually. Yeah, because we're so, also yeah. taking your broken cable, we take it back. All right, so were there other aspects? Like I can think of circularity, like I'm not an expert on that, but I always hear that plastics are the worst, mm -hmm. right? Because there are so many different plastics. And yeah. I think this thing, like it has a nice metal headband, yeah. but it still has plastics, right? Yeah. So let's say, is there any specific considerations, for example, that you took towards the materials that you're yeah. using? We, we, it's called using a mono stream of plastic, uh, choosing the same plastic if you use it and use the same plastic in all your models. So we're using a grade of ABS in this model, but we also use the same ABS in our wired version and our Bluetooth version. Uh, but, and like the screws and the cable and this headband, the, uh, we can combine that also in the other uh, models. So that's why we can easily replace uh, components within the headphone. Okay, and somebody that would do a headphone traditionally, he just wouldn't care about that basically, yeah, right? Because it, you just buy a new one yeah. and uh, it's good for his business. All right, uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I understand that. That's, that's an interesting part. And we're supply chain guys, right? So. I mean, I'm, I assume you're not making all these parts yourself. Are you making any parts yourself, or are you? Uh, you got about like 20 components in this thing, or something like yeah, that. A bit more, but uh, so how, how how did you how did you go about um, finding your suppliers and and, and, and working and, and, and working with your suppliers? Yeah. The, as a start, like we are designers, so we design everything ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but uh, during the design process, we were thinking, okay, okay we, we don't want uh, to build everything ourselves, so can we have some parts which we can buy in? Like, uh, this is a standard headband, yeah. we can just buy it in and it saves, our, saves us costs. So, uh, we sourced it via Alibaba, the first, the first, really? yeah. <laughs> the fir the first model, we, we sourced uh, speakers and the headband via Alibaba, and we had a partner uh, who had an assembly line in China, who assembled all the headphones over there, and then it was shipped to the Netherlands. Uh, but there was a big risk involved, because uh, uh, the, m m managing the quality of all the components was, was really difficult. Yeah. So that's why we, uh, along the way, we, had, uh, we changed from a production partner. All right. But that was a lesson learned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what's different for them? I mean, like, if they work for you as a designer compared to if they work as with a circular ID behind it and where they work with the traditional guys, yeah. what, how, how is it different for them? What, what is different for the suppliers? Uh, it's really different because normally, for like the, how the headphone market works, most of the time you work with the assembly factory. So uh, they buy in the speakers or the paddings or the material for the paddings and they do a bit of injection molding, they do the design of the PCB and the rest is just assemble, assembly over there. 
but they are responsible for quality and assembly. But assembly is done via glue. For them, it's the most easy way to uh, maintain a good uh, sound and a good quality of sound to just glue everything together uh -huh. because you have a fixed sound box. And I said, okay, we don't going to use glue. We are using here. Uh, for inbus screws, so the whole thing is detached from uh, with screws, and they say no, we're not going to do that because we don't have the quality. And I said, no, I'm responsible for the quality. You just going to do it. And that discussion took me a long time, right, to convince to them, convince them, yeah, that we are a serious, par serious partner for a partner from Netherlands, and we want to uh, produce this headphone. Okay, and and are you happy with it now? Uh, so what is it different in terms of the supply? I mean, you like we can you know, like this is a high quality product, but yeah. still things can break, right? Yeah. So and and you warranty these things over the duration of a contract with people that sign up for your service yeah. for three years, for example, yeah. or like some. So so does it change anything like in terms of like like the, what, what they are supplying and um, in that in that area because like you need like repairs or spare parts yeah. or. That, as a start, we, we looked to the product and said, okay, which parts will damage easily? Okay. So we need to change them uh, to, to parts which won't damage that easily. So for instance, that's why our, our headband is from steel, that it won't break. Great. If it's from, Even if it's more expensive than yeah, plastic headband. It's, it's, it's way more expensive, but uh, we know that the plastic headband will break eventually. Like th this, this will break in the end, and then we're responsible, and we need to pay for the for the new one. So that's why we have a bit uh, more expensive headband, but in the end, it saves us costs. Um, and then uh, same goes for the for the screws, for the paddings. They all, all is detachable, and we can we can change it. And within, when we produce one batch, we say, okay, we let's say we produce thousand headphones. We take uh, ten percent spare parts with it, so we can uh, service that batch of headphones to our clients. Okay, and so that's actually let's say an upsell for them because they'll sell two extra cables or yeah. so many extra percent of casings or stuff yeah. like that together with your original supply that you do. And you talk about China. Well, you know, like I'm going to my go to my Renault case. They say, well, we're gonna make cars that run one million kilometers, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll do two mid-life cycle updates to the cars so that like things that wear out, like the seats or things like that, or they get an upgrade, let's say in the meantime, and 90% of the parts, let's say, will be will be harvested actually, let's say, when the vehicle returns after one million kilometers, which is pretty different from what a traditional car actually let's say would look like. What does that model look like for Gerard Street? I mean, like these things actually, things do break because people use them, right? And you have returns. Um, so what does this model actually, let's say, look like? What does this model look like for you? Um, so the return side of yeah, the, and, yeah. um, how we manage the case, uh, cases right now is that when you like, if, if you pay per month and you quit after four months, you return it from us uh, uh, to us, and we take take a look to the product and see, okay, we can reuse this, we can reuse this, we can refurbish this, and the rest we need to recycle because we can do it, anything with it. Okay. But the life cycle of the headphone is quite long because we can uh, replace every part. So uh, basically, you have uh, like 10 or 15 years of a lifetime. But we know that our client doesn't want to use the same headphone for 10 or 15 years. He also wants to change a bit. So uh, we're, we're, they want to change as well. So okay, but if I compare it to Renault, yeah. if I understand you correctly, I mean, you're not bringing stuff back to the manufacturer, to, you're not bringing it back to China, no. you decoupled it actually. Yeah, yeah. So rather actually you decouple it, although you're the designer, you're also actually, let's say, the decoupling point in terms of like the return logistics, the second, third life and things yeah. like that. And you don't bring that back actually, let's say, to a factory uh, type of setting no. um, in, that, uh, in that area. No. We thought it was stupid to ship it back to China. So we're, we're uh, having the repair stock here in the Netherlands. And we do the repairs and refurbishment also here just in the, by the office. All right. And uh, also, it, uh, if you send broken PCBs or broken uh, batteries to China, China won't accept it anymore. They say it's uh, electronic waste 
uh, we, that doesn't come into the country. So, uh, okay, it can be done. So, uh, uh, so actually, so that's the way that let's say that, 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 that you set up the model by by decoupling it and doing actually, let's say that like that that, that return and what that multi-cycle project yeah. process actually, let's say locally. Um, but do, you, do you do that with, with you with yourself? You do it also with partners? Yeah, you consider both. to work with partners? Yeah, both. We, sometimes we do a batch with a partner and sometimes we do it with a social work, workplace. Okay. Uh, here also in Rotterdam. And uh, we do it ourselves as well because then we know how to fix it and to uh, adapt the new design. Because this is already our, our, uh, our mm, third product. We started with the bird from Charlie Parker, then we have the boss, Bruce Springsteen, it's a, it's a Bluetooth version, yeah. this is the Prince, it's Bluetooth and ANC, but it's also the third version of the same headphone, and within the design cycle we changed things, because we saw, okay, this part breaks, or we this we have feedback from our clients that this, this isn't working that, far, that well, so we can change. So you so basically much. say the returns keep you honest, and help you improve yeah, yeah, the yeah, product yeah. actually, let's say, over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a traditional it. manufacturer would never see that because no. it just ends up in the garbage. Yeah. And he doesn't know which part breaks or which part is damaged. So and we have really all the information of, of every part. So that's really interesting. And we have a direct to consumer model. So we have the client information. And within, within a retail model, you, you as, a, as a brand doesn't have. Yeah, yeah. you know, the wholesaler or the yeah. best the retailer. And that's it. They and that's about it. Yeah, right? they don't speak to the client that much. Yeah. Okay, so those are all benefits also of a circular model, also yeah. brought back to a business model yeah. um, for, for, for you guys yeah. at this area. And the, the funny thing is that uh, during Corona, a lot of uh, brands are setting up their own web shop at the moment because Rizzo is closed and now they're feeling okay uh, the, the product isn't that good as we expected because now they need to fix all the repairs and all the questions themselves instead of the retail and now now they see okay we need to design our uh, headphone in a different way okay uh, if I look at like many of our customers who are like like companies that are like in manufacturing companies, machine building, um, those type of things, uh, like uh, uh, discrete manufacturing of more complex products. I think like for them also, let's say, I think we'll say the, the whole idea about, let's say, these return logistics is the most challenging. I mean, I think people can see through the design part and they have engineers as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think they can look at like sustainability of a project and they don't tend to consider that, like I say, I think that's the most challenging part of it, but where I can see that they really struggle with and where I really think that they affect their supply chain is, is actually this return logistics part. Yeah. So what were your, I mean, you've gone through this cycle now like a couple of times. So yeah. what were your main lessons actually, let's say, in that area that you say, well, this stuff that you really don't say need to think of and we hadn't thought of before and, and that really, let's say, affects, let's say, the relationship for with with with, with, in, in, with the, in these return logistics with the suppliers and for our own company. Yeah, uh, as a start for us, this is a bit more easy because the, the components are way cheaper than if you produce like really high quality uh, production things. So uh, we could take more risk in the return uh, uh, shipment. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, we didn't know if the client will, will send it back, like because we can demand it from them. But we noticed that like 95% of all the components are shipped back to us. Okay, so it's a great percentage, right? Yeah, that was great. Does it exceed your expectations? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That way it exceeds. We thought maybe 50, 60 percent was also, and we didn't know because nobody is doing it at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no. You're the first one to do it, right? Exactly. There was pioneer. Yeah, that's what. That's one of the reasons why we started the company to get this kind of data, uh, and uh, also everybody said to us, okay, but if you, if you repair everything, people will damage your product more easily. That also didn't happen. Okay. Uh, people treat it with respect, uh, it treated it well. Um, so also that data is showing that uh, this can be done. And uh, taking back, 
uh, yeah, for, 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 for your clients, I think is you, you really need to uh, take into consideration the more expensive something is, it's more interesting for you to recycle and to take back to your uh, reuse again. So you really look to the components, make it modular, which part, need to make, which part do you need to make modular mm -hmm. and uh, send it back to, get it back to you and uh, reuse it again. Do you do any forecasting on that? Or was it possible to do any forecasting when things will return and at what point in time and in which quantities? Or are you taking that more or less like as you go for now? Yeah, we did it really as you go because we didn't know anything about churn. About uh, We had a monthly subscription so people could quit every month. So that was the start. Okay, will people rent it for a longer time? Now, uh, people are renting it for two and a half to three years on average. So that's that's great. So, uh, but that's really learn by doing. And also, uh, we uh, the first batch we took just a, a larger batch of spare parts because we didn't know which part will break. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's just uh, like an engineering problem. Uh, and we do have a great contract with the uh, with the factory because if there's uh, less than eight percent in the batch going wrong, they need to produce another batch. Okay. But I don't want that because the, the whole batch is then wasted and then we still create waste. Yeah. So that's why I'm content. But they have an incentive in the contract at least to yeah. that aligns with your business model yeah. because obviously otherwise if you would have 20% returns, yeah. you would blow your profit and your business model out yeah. of the window and you've aligned their objectives. Uh, with, with, with their objectives, let's say, through the arrangements that you've made with them in that area. Yeah. So there is a consideration in the contracting there as well. And it's yeah. not just going to Alibaba and finding the cheapest supplier no, 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 no. because eventually that will not that won't work. cut the chase, right? No, because yeah. then all your headphones come back within uh, six months, they get broken or the quality isn't good and you don't want that. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, I think it was very insightful for me to understand how you've organized your supply chain mm -hmm. and really you've gone, let's say, through these type of steps. Thank you very much for coming over and then having this conversation with me. And yeah, I mean, we love the product and we'll continue to use it. So maybe there's another occasion in the future um, actually to talk about some other aspects. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, thanks.